Here in Dumas, where we're at, is a agricultural community. It's basically farming, very little industry. And it's a really small town. If you blink, when you go through it, you might miss it. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's home and where we want to be. We are 90 miles from Little Rock in southeastern Arkansas, where the Arkansas River, the White River, and the Mississippi River all come together. It is strictly a farming community. We have very few factories down here. I've always said that if you didn't have a business that was tied into farming, you just got by the best way you could. And that is basically what we did at our grocery store for as long as we could. To make a living around here, you have to do what you can. So I had to do a lot of different things in my life to make a living. I met Chuck at my job. I worked for his dentist. So I was 19, I guess, and he was about mm, 22. And we were just two young kids who dated for a very short three months. And then we kind of went our separate ways. But about three years later, we started dating again. And when we started dating again, then it, it never stopped. My parents were great people. They taught me the value of work, how to be honest, any kind and every kind of value in life. You know, they taught me. Chuck's mom and dad were very hard workers. They helped everybody in the community. His parents had had two grocery stores and then his mom had a boot store. But during the time in between, they were farming. Well, there was a bad year. So his mom said, well, we'll just build another store and we'll have another grocery store. Right before we got engaged, they opened up the third store and that's where we still are today. We're in the same building. In the 80s, whenever the grocery store first started, things were going good. We had a hunting store in the back. Uh, we sold guns, bows and arrows, ammunition, camouflage clothes, groceries, barbecue sandwiches. Uh, my mother-in-law smoked pork butts and we had homemade barbecue sandwiches every day. It was a very popular thing. There were a lot of farmers out in the area that had quite a few people employed. So we made a lot of lunches for farmers. We started taking out shelves in the grocery store and putting in tables. So um, we started cooking shrimp po' boys, muffalettas, cheese dip, fish, you know, we had hamburgers. And for a while, that, that was really good. Probably around 2008, 2009, even our lunch business dwindled because every time someone new opened up in our little town, well, that just took a piece of our pie and it got smaller and smaller. So during this time, Chuck was cooking at Duck Lodges when he would go out there and cook for 60 days at a time. And he started aging beef. Um, he knew that this was what he, he wanted the steakhouse to open. And he had been working on it for probably a couple of years before it all came into play. We knew that our lunch business was not what it should be. And he started writing down recipes, things that he wanted to prepare and things that he wanted to do at our restaurant. And he saw the need to draw up a plan and get started on it. Well, he had to convince our banker about that. The day I went to the bank to borrow the money for the restaurant, uh, the response I got was, he scratched his head and said, oh boy, you want to do, you want to do what? <laughs> he kind of hee-hawed around there and then I told him, I said, well listen, what I've got on paper I think will work. And I said, if you don't, loan me the money to do it, you're going to be on in a grocery store. Do you want to own a grocery store? No. Okay then. I got my loan then. 
I'd be lying if I said it wasn't scary. It was scary for Chuck too, but he never wavered. It was definitely a leap of faith. Well, we opened up the steakhouse in October of 2012. And Chuck and I had mortgaged a lot of stuff. We had made a lot of decisions. You know, we had to figure out a way how we were gonna have some income for two, three months before we could get up and get on our feet. Gotta have an exceptional product. And the only way you're gonna get an exceptional product is use exceptional meat, which is prime. We only serve prime and, you know, I told Pam before we done this, I said, listen, we can't have just a steakhouse. We're gonna have to have people drive here from everywhere. I said, people aren't gonna drive here from everywhere if you just serve a marginal cut of meat. I got to have something to draw people here. After we opened up in October, people in our area were not used to what prime beef was. And that Christmas was probably one of the saddest Christmas I've ever had because I thought we had made the worst mistake of our life. Nobody was coming out. Uh, people were not supporting us. People were talking about us behind our back, that we were so high that we would never make it. And I was pretty much devastated. But once again, Chuck is always positive and he says, we can't quit. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. It's gonna turn around. We're going to have to draw from all over the state and all over, just everywhere. A girl from Pine Bluff's parents came here to eat. And she works for the Channel 7 in Little Rock, the TV station. And she invited Chuck and our daughter to come up on a Saturday morning to do a show that was aired on the TV station. That got the ball rolling. That was kind of a turning point that people were finally beginning to hear about us all over the state. That kind of gave us a breaking point. And it just kind of slowly, slowly started rolling. You know, it kept getting better, 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 better the whole time. But, you know, to really say, well, we've turned the corner and we're an institution, you know, just a couple of three years ago. I kept hearing her name on the radio when people would call in, when they'd say, well, what do you think the best steakhouse is in Arkansas? Taylor Steakhouse? You know, and then the, they would talk about us all the time on that radio station. You see the uh, limos and the party buses, people from everywhere. Some guys come in and they were Dressed up, one guy had a, and I wouldn't know a Gucci suit from a smoochy suit, but a girl in the kitchen said, that's a Gucci suit. Well, come to find out, some people come in and said, did y'all know y'all had three Lamborghinis parked out in front of your restaurant? I said, no, we didn't, but it was those guys. They had driven in from Little Rock with three Lamborghinis. When I see all my reservations and all my customers from all over, not just at home. It makes me very proud for all the struggle that we've been through. It makes me very proud, makes me happy. I'm just thankful for all the customers, the friendships that we've built. It just makes all the difference when you go to the table to check on them and say, how is everything? Is there... It's wonderful. It's the best steak I've ever had. You know, it just fills me with pride. We draw from a big area. I mean, we draw from people from Little Rock, Pine Bluff, Sheridan, Monticello, Star City, McGee. I mean, we have customers from Louisiana. You know, we're pretty close to the Louisiana line. We have customers from Mississippi, Tennessee. I have some people flying in from West Memphis. And I know who they are. That, that's, that's the part that gets me now. I have a friend that comes out to eat and she'll say, who are all these people? I don't know any of them. And I'll say, well, they're my regular customers. Well, I use a 
brawler. They call, they call it a hotel brawler. Uh, it's an infrared brawler. And at the source where the heat comes from, it's like 1800 degrees. And down where the stakes are, it's actually hitting the stakes about a thousand degrees. So like a medium rare steak, you know, it only takes me about eight minutes to cook it. And it comes out with a good crust on it. You know, I use kosher salt, cracked black pepper is all I use. Then once the steaks come up, then they're rolled in that compound butter. That kosher salt helps develop that crust that I get. I don't know, that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> I've been developing that recipe for years. I only finished it like a month or two before we opened. It's just a compound butter and I don't dare tell what's in it. Matter of fact, the ingredients are in a safe. I keep the ingredients in a safe. Everybody wants to know what's in it, but I don't tell. My wife and I know what's in it, no, nobody else. That sets our steaks apart. I really want to be humble another way. Sometimes I'm not too humble because I think my steak's the best steak I ever eat. I would love to eat at some of the finer steak houses just to see how theirs compare to mine. You know, I have people tell me that's eat at those. Peter Luger's and some of your other Morton's and some of your finer steak houses that were comparable, if not better, in some cases. Well, I'm sure not gonna say I got the best steak in the world, but I'm just proud that people think it's comparable to some of those places. That, that's big for a little steakhouse out in the middle of nowhere to even be talked about in the same sentence as Peter Luger. That's great. I don't ever give up anything I've ever done. I've never gave up. Sometimes you want to, but you got to keep, keep telling yourself, just keep going, keep going. Dream come true to be inducted into the Steakhouse Hall of Fame. Never thought it would happen. My banker told me the other day, y'all got it whooped now. <laughs> y'all got it whooped. <laughs>